Welcome, welcome. So in the previous couple of episodes, we've been building this instruction decoder and this works, but our main computer is now broken. We've got errors that we need to fix. Some of that is just this opcode line has expanded to five bits instead of three. So let's go around and get this working. And then hopefully there'll be time to move on to another topic. Hmm. Hmm. That looks a little big. I don't think I'll do it this way. So I'm going to do the same thing as I've done before, where I used an AND gate and inverted some of the inputs to match a part of the opcode. So I'm just looking at the upper three bits of the opcode and just checking to see if those are, well, going from left to right, one, zero, zero, or yeah, you get what I mean. The most significant bit should be one. Hmm. I think this is backwards, actually. Most significant bit should be one and the following two bits should be zero. And then that would indicate that we're in the zone for ALU instructions, at least the first eight anyway. There'll be 16 eventually, but yeah, we'll get there. So what I'm doing is I'm matching the upper three bits. Do I need the upper three bits or do I just need the upper two bits? Hmm. Probably just the upper two bits, actually. So I'm matching the upper two bits to see if they're a pattern that I want to recognize as an ALU instruction. And then I'm just passing that through a multiplexer that will either use opcode 7, which was the jump, but it happens to do nothing in the ALU currently, so it seems like a good knot. And then, um, and then I'm going to pass the opcode through to the rest of the circuit so that the rest of the circuit doesn't need to know that there's now five bits. And this is just a temporary thing. Eventually we'll do this properly, but we don't need to yet. Oh, I have these backwards. That's why it's not working. Okay, let's try that again. So that should be zero here. One, two, three. Oh, and here's our musty cure. Awesome. Okay. This looks like it's working. Hmm. Now we're getting to the point where um, a ROM would be a lot more seen, but also a lot less readable. So I think I'm just going to keep running with this, even though it's kind of crazy. All right, the processor runs, but uh, we need to update our assembler. So we only have one CPU def, and it's right here. So we just have to update this to the new instruction set formats, and we should be golden. So in here, we just have to go left to right and encode this. So we've got the immediate form, which is right here, and we have the 
to register form, which is right here. So we just have to encode both of those. The jump also is right here, and there's a one register and zero register form of that. So, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's just encode the jump in this space here uh, temporarily until we get to doing things properly. Okay, I think this is correct. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, this is not. Let's just line everything up here. Hmm. Oh, I see. Things moved around here. I'm not sure what's going on here. We're getting a zero for the op. That's very interesting. Hmm. I believe this is a move instruction. Hmm. Let's just make sure that our CPU def is correct for move. Um, oh, it's not. That's where the op code is. So that should be a six. This is a zero. And I'm pretty sure the jump is broken. We can fix that in a bit. So the first instruction should be a move, I think, not an add. Uh, let's see here. Oh, no, it is an add. Okay. All right. So then the second instruction should also be an add, but a two reg add. Interesting. Two reg add should be zero, one, zero. Yeah. Hmm. So the op is 10 here and zero here. Oh. I think I know. I think I know. Uh, hmm. There. Add, add, move. Okay. Add, add. Move, add, move, jump. Um, but the jump line is not high. Hmm. Okay. We can make the jump these two. Let's see if this works. Jump, this should be jump. Jump is happening uh, with a value of one. That worked. So we just need to fix our display here. So here's the jump. So RD valid is false. So this blanks out. It's not two rigs, so this blanks out. I think I want this oops and then we need to move jump jump is that four i think mm, nope what's up 
four, as I thought, I must be off by one. Off by one errors. That's how it goes sometimes. Zero, one. Yeah, I'm at three, not four. Um, let's see here. There we go. That looks better. Okay, and our test cases are probably failing because I haven't regenerated them. Yes, they're creating the circuit in stir display. Huh, that's weird. Because it's working in this circuit. Huh, what? Ooh, there we go. That's a weird error. Okay, um, so let's update our test cases. Nope. What's wrong with that? Hmm. Maybe the mustic instruction is wrong? Well, let's update both because I don't see where the problem is, and then we'll try and troubleshoot our mustic instruction. Hmm, that looks correct. Why? Jump failed. Oh, add passed, but jump failed. Okay. All right. So it wants to jump to six, which it does. Uh, it moves three into R1. And jumps to four, two and a zero, or R2, jumps to one, three and a zero, all right, then jumps to eight. Oh, but our jump is clearing out zero, R0. Zero. That's what the problem is. See, this is why we've got test cases, because they catch things like this. Um, okay, so when we're jumping, why is R0 being cleared out? Right, so left is zero, R is four, code is four. So we need to move to the one where, okay, next jump, what's happening here? All right, left is zero, result is zero, right is eight, and we're not passing five through anywhere. I wonder if just passing this straight through would fix that. It might just. R0 is 5, result is 5. And here's our must eek, and it's succeeding. Sweet. Oh, and now the decoder tests failed. Of course. Right. Okay. Easy enough. That looks good. And we have passing tests. Excellent. Sweet. Okay, so we have a working processor again. Wow, I wasn't quite expecting that to take the whole video, but um, well, sometimes these sorts of things do. So we've got a new decode circuit that's more what you would see in a, in a normal processor. It has multiple instruction formats and we're able to decode five different kinds of instructions, I guess, you know, because they're roughly broken down by category. So I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.